The ancient skyscrapers of Yemen, also known as the Old City, are one of the most interesting discoveries relating to early skyscraper architecture. These structures are found all over Yemen, but mostly in Sana'a. The Old City is a UNESCO World Heritage Site and has been a cultural and architectural landmark for over 2,000 years. Whether it is the Great Wall of China or Machu Picchu, the question always arises. Humankind was never short on intelligence. They made use of resources of their era and left us wonders and amazed us at the sight of such sights. Likewise, one of such wonders is the skyscrapers of Yemen. Was it an ancient civilization that built them, or did they get intelligence from another unknown culture? The ancient skyscrapers of Yemen are one of the most interesting discoveries relating to early skyscraper architecture. These structures are found all over Yemen, but mostly in Sana'a. This is the oldest example of high-rise buildings in the world. The skyscrapers of Yemen date back to the 8th and 9th centuries. Three cities are more popular, namely Shibam, Sana'a, and Zabid, all with vertical high-rise buildings. One of the cities, Shibam, has been known as the first city with a vertical master plan, and it is also called the Manhattan of the Desert. Sana'a is the capital of Yemen, and Zabid is located at the western coastal plain. All of these cities are recognized as the UNESCO World Heritage Sites and are hence protected. These cities are genuinely unique, and UNESCO is doing its utmost to preserve these sites. These are just skyscrapers built by people of those times. What is so unique about them? Everything decays the fact that these skyscrapers are made of mud dating back to the 8th century, and they are still in use. Some places have been converted to hotels and cafes, but the astonishing news is that the majority of these skyscrapers are still used as private residences by natives. Imagine generations of families living there, how solid and deep-rooted their families must be. The architecture of these skyscrapers is genuinely one of a kind, and it shows that people of that era were capable of telling what is good and what is not and how to make an environment feasible for themselves. These buildings were constructed using natural materials, mainly of which was mud. The high-rises are perfectly suited and sustainable to the climate of the Arabian Desert. The roof terraces double as being open-air bedrooms. The screens on the windows allow the calm breeze to enter the house, even if it's the slightest and it also allowed light, but removing heat, making less heat entering the structure. Shibam has its roots in the pre-Islamic era, where evidence of construction dates back to the 9th century. It is home to densely packed skyscrapers with four to eight stories. The fortified ring wall has allowed the city to survive a prox. 2,000 years besides its hazardous location right across to the Wadi floodplain. The town emerged as a beacon of wealth, also becoming a significant stop on the incense and spice route. It then began as a territory for rival families seeking political power, protection, and prestige from the Bedouin thieves. This idea of stacked houses quickly became popular, more specifically a modus operandi. The construction of hundreds of such buildings became the way. This solution eradicated vulnerabilities from attacks and simultaneously displayed the wealth of individuals there. It was built over the pre-Islamic capital of Shabwa, which got destroyed in 380. Some remains of the earliest construction were still there, such as a castle built in 1220 and a mosque constructed in 904. However, the city of Shibam was reconstructed mainly after 1532 when a crushing flood swept the majority of the region, ruining the foundations of the city's skyscrapers. Although the city is located at the highest point strategically on the Wadi floodplain, it has often been the victim of flooding, prompting the protection of its outer walls. Shibam has been named as Manhattan of the Desert of the Chicago of the Desert. It represents the perfect and one of the earliest examples of rigorous planning based on vertical construction. Being a symbol for the resilience and rise of the Middle Eastern culture in the emptiness of the desert, it has been credited as the home of the first high-rise apartment skyscrapers. Another skyscraper city of Yemen, Sana'a, is 2,300 meters above sea level on a fertile basin. 
The specific network of streets within the town is based on a hierarchy of private and public spaces. It prevails from all over the city, from major markets to entranced doors to houses to gates, with many gardens. Despite all the activity going on when stepping through Bab al-Yaman, Gate of Yemen, whether it be vendors selling, camels in tight circles crushing sesame seeds, or whatnot, the architecture of the place dominates every single thing. The lower floors of the building don't have a window due to them being used as working spaces or animal shelters. The windows above are covered by either mashrabiya screens or stained glass, which protects the privacy of those living inside. Some buildings were also seven-story high. Many rooftops there had terraces, which multiplied the entertainment spots and became outdoor bedrooms for hot nights. Some terraces have been converted into cafe spaces as well. When viewing these high-rise buildings, one can only imagine themselves being in New York or Dubai because the sensation is similar. The only difference is that these were constructed thousands of years before modern skyscrapers. If we talk on a broad level, the city of Zavid used to be located on the part of the road between Mecca and India, the Aden Mecca route. The network of lanes and streets in Zabid is occupied by an oval-shaped protective wall, organized according to the very early plan. What are some threats faced by these ancient skyscrapers? How did they stand so long? Although these buildings are truly one of a kind and amazingly constructed, they are constantly threatened by economic struggles, wind erosion, and war, which prevents residents from looking after their homes. In 2020, UNESCO attempted surveying around 8,000 of these architectural areas and were able to restore 78 of these that was almost about to collapse. The loss is for all of humanity, as quoted by Mokdad, further adding that these buildings would be museum pieces, but in Yemen, they will remain homes. She expressed how she cannot begin to describe the pride of being part of a home preserved by generations and generations and that they are a connection to our past. Shibam is also under constant threat. May it be rain, heat erosion, wind, or whatnot. A tropical cyclone in 2008 flooded Shibam, which damaged several structures and became a threat for the destruction of its mud-built skyscrapers. How truly amazing is it that our ancestors built everything with such delicacy and complexity, using all the natural resources available to them? and constructing such a substantial mass of bodies that are still standing solid and firm on the ground. The skyscrapers of Yemen date back to the 8th century. Shibam is the first city with a vertical master plan. These buildings were built with many variables in mind, internal and external threats, such as wind, heat, and state enemies. The walls surrounding these cities provide excellent protection from external threats, such as war and floods. These sites have been added to the UNESCO World Heritage Site. Also, with the constant instability in the region and the continuous look after for the buildings, with generations living in these buildings, we know how genuinely deep-rooted these sites are for the world, and especially for those living there. Yemeni architecture is distinctive in its own right. It has a distinct style that distinguishes it from the architectural styles of other nations. Many Yemenis live in ancient skyscrapers that are built on top of each other. These buildings are not only residences but also serve as businesses, shops, restaurants, and more. Many ancient skyscrapers have been abandoned since the 1990s due to war and lack of maintenance, but there are still many residents living in them who refuse to leave their homes. Perhaps we need to dig deeper to find out why they were built and who built them. We may never know the true origins of the ancient skyscrapers of Yemen.